We are so pleased that we've attracted world-class speakers. We had uh, Professor Don Berwick to start the day with his, uh, his video presentation. We've had Professor Chris Ham from the King's Fund. We've had Secretary of State for Health, Wellbeing and Sport, who has, you know, has been a great supporter of pharmacy and was endorsing uh, community pharmacy in particular. So there have been some superb uh, presentations this morning that have stimulated um, a lot of questions, uh, very thought-provoking and challenging. Um, and we need to rise to the challenges as a profession. Pharmacists add value in many different ways, but particularly I would say when it comes to that population of people with complex long-term conditions, multi-morbidity, who are probably on several different treatments, including different drug regimes, and there are risks involved in that. If we don't get that right, then it may be bad for patients and bad for their health outcomes. And that's why we need pharmacists to be at the heart of the teams delivering the right care to the growing number of people with these complex comorbidities. I'm pleased to say that pharmacists have been at the forefront of our efforts to improve medication safety. We know that in the managed sector we have a network of pharmacists and medication safety officers and that network used national and local sources of intelligence to identify medication safety issues and then to make recommendations for reducing risk and then to try and ensure that that guidance is followed. There are real incentives at the moment in Wales to engage pharmacists in the community, in the care of people with long-term conditions. Uh, only last week, uh, the Cabinet Secretary in Wales made a really positive announcement for our community pharmacy, a desire to commit to investing in that sector over this year and the next, and remodelling the way pharmacies work in Wales. So there's all to do. There's a real opportunity at the moment and a really important time for us to be working together. I'm looking forward to working with pharmacists in Wales over the next six to 12 months to really make that a reality. And more and more, those decisions and that care and treatment will take place in a pharmacy, both to take pressure off GP services, to reduce unnecessary appointments, but crucially, to make sure that people receive the right care at the right time and in the right place. And more and more, those decisions and that care and treatment will take place in a pharmacy. Well, I do a lot of work in out of hours, and we often see patients time and time again with long-term complex problems. So if we take somebody with COPD who gets an exacerbation, well, why shouldn't they be able to go to the pharmacy? The pharmacist can give them advice. If they feel that they need a, a medical opinion, it would be great to be able to sync up our IT system so the pharmacist can load the details up. I could, as a GP, could have a conversation with the pharmacist, with the patient, maybe even get some OBS, and be able to treat and advise a patient who never needs to step outside that community pharmacy. There's huge potential if we can get the IT and the governance right. As experts in medicines, it's imperative that pharmacists continue to play a leading role, not only in the delivery of that system, but in the design of it as well. So I know the focus of this year's conference is on shifting care into the community and closer to people's homes, exactly in accordance with one of the key objectives of this government. I'm really encouraged and really excited about the future pharmacy here in Wales and I look forward to working with you not just for today but over the many years ahead as we really do re-engineer and improve health and care here in Wales. We are thrilled that over 200 people have attended this conference um, and not just from a pharmacy background, from a wide background and not just from Wales, we've had questions from all over the UK.